Hey everyone, it's Urban Armed, and I wanted to start on this video, uh, which is called the, I don't know, Evolution of Equipment. I don't know what the title will be yet, but basically it's the evolution of uh, some of the gear I've used over the last four years since having this channel uh, from the beginning videos to pretty much what I'm making now. And I'm getting ready to send uh, one of the cameras off to my brother. Bro! who's at the Guns For Everyone channel, Isaac, so that he can use it to make videos uh, for their concealed carry class training videos and stuff like that. So I'll have a link down to their channel uh, in the description below, as well as uh, I'll try to put links to some of the, the, the items in the description as well. Some of them may not be available anymore. Some of it's older, some of the camera gear, or the older Rode video mic. You could probably find them maybe on eBay, but if I can't find a link, I'll just, at least put the model number. Uh, so if anyone's interested, you might be able to find it on, on eBay used or something like that. I highly recommend trying to buy stuff used if you can. It just really cuts down the, uh, the total upfront cost. There's nothing wrong with buying video and audio equipment used as long as it's in good shape. Uh, if they're taken care of, they'll, they'll typically last a long time. This, um, this microphone right here is the original uh, Rode video mic. And I bought this thing probably uh, eight years ago, and it still works great. Just take care of it. All I've had to do is replace the silicone uh, shock absorbers uh, just because they dry out and go bad after a while, and they were like a couple of bucks. So I'm gonna send that off to my brother. But, you know, if you can find lenses and stuff like that used, as long as they're in good shape, uh, you can save almost 50% of your of the value or the initial cost for those. So anyway, I'll go ahead and uh, bring you over to the table and we'll get started with the initial equipment I used for the very first, probably uh, 75 to 100 videos on my channel. All right guys, so here we have the uh, original setup. This camera right here is the JVC. It's the Averio GZ HD 30U is the model number. And this is a, uh, pretty old camera at this point. It's a, it has an internal 80 gigabyte hard drive, which is a lot of space. It records at 1080p at 60 frames. And uh, I would usually downscale that to 24 frames in post-production. It does have a built-in microphone, which actually isn't bad. But the reason why I really liked this camera at the time that I bought it uh, was that it has an external microphone input, which is critical. It does have um, a cold shoe mount as well at the top, and it was really expensive when I bought it. <laughs> I think it was about $1,000 when I bought this, and you can probably get the equivalent of this type of camera now for within a couple hundred dollars. But back then, when I bought this, this was pretty much the best, one of the, for a pro consumer, prosumer line uh, camcorder, it was uh, really, really good. It's the AVC HD in an MPEG-2 format. And the biggest thing I was looking for was a nice, a decent sized sensor that had a nice color profile and it had the uh, external microphone input. So uh, that'd be my recommendation to anybody that's looking at buying uh, a camera is to have the ability to have that additional microphone input on, on the side because if you're doing anything aside from a controlled environment, this, this microphone is really, most, most built-in microphones on cameras really suck. So I, you know, bought a couple of uh, batteries I used to this mount, which has seen its better days. Uh, but this allowed me to mount this to a tripod, put the camera in here, and have basically three cold shoe mounts uh, or shoe mounts, whatever you want to call them, for uh, other equipment like lights and and uh, microphones and what have you. So the microphone that I used uh, was this Rode video mic that I was just talking about a second ago. And it's a shotgun mic, what's referred to as a shotgun mic. So it, it's really good at uh, canceling out a lot of noise in the background and on the sides and just really focusing on picking up uh, on the front, whatever is in front of it. So the closer you can get to this mic, the better off you are. I'm currently using a new iteration of this microphone, which is a little bit shorter. Um, and I'll show you that in a, in a little bit because it's actually on top of this camera right now that you're, you're viewing this through. But Wow, it really, it just uses a, a nine volt battery um, and this will really change the game for you. Uh, most people will say audio is probably the most critical component of any video. Uh, you can have 
crappy quality video, but if you have crappy quality audio, then it's just gonna suck all together. Uh, so basically this was the setup right here. Let me go ahead and put this on here. So that's kind of how this would look. And uh, that was pretty much the setup for like the first 100 videos. And it's been a great, great configuration. Uh, I just have kind of outgrown uh, this particular setup. So I'm actually gonna uh, forward it on to my brother so that they can use it over there because my thought process of, I haven't used this in like a year. So if you haven't used something in a year, it's time to sell it. Uh, or give it away. So um, it still has a lot of good life to it and hope to see some awesome videos come from that. Uh, a couple batteries, simple charger. Uh, you would export just by plugging the video or the USB cable into the front and import into your uh, computer. It has a nice little um, cover there and a really good optical zoom and an okay digital zoom. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much Pretty much it. So this was the very first one. Um, I'll have a link in, 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 the, in the description area for the models. Um, you probably won't even want to buy this. There's probably newer stuff out now. Uh, this is pretty old. I think I got this in like 2009, 2000, 2008 actually maybe. Uh, so um, it's, you know, it's still a great quality camera though, but you can find better now for cheaper uh, if you're looking to buy something. So now we'll go into uh, kind of what I'm using right now. All right, so now uh, we're looking at the gear that I use uh, most recently, and I'm recording this video from my iPhone 6, um, which is also part of the uh, part of this whole kind of kit thing that I use. I have this kind of gear that I've progressed onto. Um, I'll just kind of start down here. This is my iPhone 5S. Uh, still works pretty awesome. I use it as a business line. Uh, it has the 120 frame per second slow motion. The iPhone 6, which I'm recording on now, does 240. But I do use those a lot. If you watched my Audi car wash, um, time to watch the Audi video, there's a couple slow-mo parts in the video and I actually used this phone that you're uh, seeing this through, which is the iPhone 6. Um, so it's not in here, but you all know what an iPhone 6 looks like. Uh, so I'll just start over here to the left. Um, this is the Canon 70D, and I have a 10 to 22 millimeter uh, Canon USM lens on here. It's a 3.5 uh, aperture, I think 3.5 to 14 or something. Um, the Canon 70D is probably the single best camera that uh, I've ever used, I've ever owned for video. And the reason why I went with the 70D is because of the uh, autofocus capabilities. Uh, the reason I went to a DSLR was so that I could have the um, freedom and flexibility to change out the lenses and also record in lower light situations depending upon the aperture of the lens. This is the kit lens it came with. It's an 18 to 155, um, I'm sorry, 18 to 135 uh, zoom lens and it has image stabilization built in along with uh, autofocus. Um, it's a pretty good lens. Um, for a kit lens, I was actually pretty impressed with, with the quality of the uh, image and uh, the image stabilization is actually pretty decent. Uh, the USM lens I have on here is not image stabilized, but it's such a wide angle lens where um, even doing run and gun type video, uh, it should work out pretty well. Uh, that 10 to 22 millimeter. So that kind of covers that the video uh, that I opened with um, and this video was uh, videoed on this lens. And I also have a couple prime lenses. This is a 55 millimeter, or I'm sorry, 50 millimeter lens. This is uh, often referred to as the Nifty 50. Um, I had the older version too, which was the pl more plastic. This is the STM lens which, with autofocus. Uh, it's a prime lens, so there's no zoom capabilities, but it has a great, great quality photo. And it's a 1.8 maximum aperture, which means I can record in very low light conditions and still get a decent, decent video shot without increasing my ISO too high. And this is another prime lens. This is the 24 millimeter uh, by Canon, uh, which is also an STM lens. And it is a 2.8 lens is its uh, biggest aperture. So. Uh, again, another night, a decent wide angle at 24 millimeters, and um, it gets great picture uh, even in low light conditions. And I also have this light here, uh, which you can change with the filter, uh, and it's on a dimmer. 
and this works out really well if I just need a key light. You know, if I'm doing a video down in the garage or something like that, and I just want a little extra light on myself uh, or whatever I'm filming, you can see as I turn the dial here, things get brighter and just really boost the quality of the video. So speaking of quality of video, that's what I've been using now. Um, I've also upgraded my audio. And as you can see, I also use GoPros. Um, if you see my channel, you see I use these quite a bit, especially for like our run and gun videos and stuff like that. Uh, these things are awesome. This is the four black edition and the three plus black edition. Um, I like the blacks because they do higher frame rates. Um, and this is also shoots at 4K. Um, I haven't experimented too much with 4K. I also have the DJI Phantom uh, 3 Professional. Uh, this shoots in 4K as well, and I'm still learning how to use that. Uh, it's at 30 frames, and I've got a uh, ND filter on there right now, but um, that's kind of another evolution. Another camera um, I used to use for some of my videos is this guy, which is the uh, Sony HDV. This is more of a professional grade video camera. Um, but uh, <laughs> the Colorado shoot last year, we actually shot the lens out. Um, so I need to get that, that lens uh, repaired if I want to continue to use this camera. Uh, kind of sucks, but um, this is also another really high-end quality camera. Um, and it has the mic inputs and stuff. But I didn't bring it down here on the table because you know I'm not using it right now. Um, I hope to get it fixed and I'll probably incorporate it again down the road, but I don't know. I'm kind of past using tape uh, to video on. So moving on to the audio, um, this is the Rode VideoMic Pro. It's smaller, has um, a little bit more boost. You can, uh, it has an, a wind uh, filter on here so it can cut out on the wind. Uh, it's a little shorter, so when it sits up here on the DSLR, it's not as it's not as big, and uh, it works out pretty well. So um, a lot of the videos recently, um, and in the ones in Colorado and stuff from the uh, last Arroyo Palooza, uh, this was pretty much the running gun setup, and I was switching between uh, these lenses right here. So as far as audio goes, um, I do often record into a Zoom H5. And uh, sometimes I'll uh, uh, use the Sennheiser wireless uh, mic pack. This is the EW100 uh, G3. It's excellent quality. Um, it's wireless. These are pricey, um, I'm not gonna lie. But, um, you know, very, very good quality. You don't have to spend this kind of money to get that kind of quality. It's just kind of what I, what I have. The Zoom H5 is a great um, handheld audio recorder. It has XLR inputs as well as mini jack inputs up top and the XY uh, stereo microphone so you can record right into it with analog dials, which is really, really, really handy. Uh, these run for about $270 on Amazon. I'll have a link down below. You can swap these uh, tops out and put other things in there like another, you know, two more XLR mics. So you could actually run this as a four channel audio recorder if you wanted to. Um, I haven't done that. I haven't needed, had the need, but um, if you do any like podcasting or you want to have multiple inputs for recording uh, the, the Zoom H4n, the Zoom H5, the Zoom H6, um, all solid, solid recorders. And so what I'll do sometimes is I'll actually, um, if I'm not going to be using the shotgun mic, because the shotgun mic is great if I'm going to be in front of the camera, but if I'm going to be behind the camera, um, if I'm recording, say something like a video on like my guns or reloading or something, and I have the camera on a tripod aiming down, if I have this video road mic sitting on here pointing down and I'm behind it. it the audio is not very good because it's a shotgun mic is designed to record right from the front. Um, so that's kind of where I will lean on uh, these guys. Um, sometimes I'll plug this straight into the camera, um, but I've been experimenting with actually plugging this into the H5 and um, basically just syncing up the audio in post-production because it just sounds so good. The preamps in here are just incredible. Um, these right here um, are microphones that um, I got for business-related purposes, doing um, high-end like interview type style. These are the Sony ECM 44B. These run for like $250 a pop, so they're not cheap, but these are studio grade uh, lapel microphones. Um, and these are the kinds they use like in like 
news studios like CBS, Fox News uses these these microphones here. Um, so these guys powered into here. These are powered mics, but this also does supply phantom power if you need it. Phantom power is for microphones that don't have power. Um, so I will use these occasionally. Um, the only thing is these are wired. So if I have these plugged in here, I have to have it running across the floor to my shirt or something. And I'm always terrified that like I'm gonna run these over with the wheel of my chair or something and screw them up and I really don't wanna do that. So I generally use these for more like business stuff, um, doing commercials or, um, and I don't do, <laughs> I don't want you to think that I do commercials professionally. I work in marketing and so a lot of times I will do video production specifically for like web their websites and stuff, um, law firms, stuff like that. And that's where I use these uh, for I, I do do that kind of kind of uh, commercial type stuff, but not anything like on TV. I'm not I'm not a professional videographer or anything. Although I would like to be one day, um, and that's kind of one of my goals is working on becoming more of a, a filmmaker. Uh, some sort of um, anyway. I've talked about that in the past, but anyway, that's a different video. So this is pretty much it. Um, this is pretty much all the gear that I use. So if you see any of my videos as of lately, um, it's probably being recorded. Uh, either with a GoPro, this iPhone 6, the iPhone 5S, or this Canon 70D, 70D. Um, and it's probably being recorded with either uh, this Rode VideoMic Pro uh, or uh, the Sennheiser or the uh, ECM 440B microphones. So hopefully, um, hopefully this wasn't too long and boring. Uh, I know there's a lot of stuff here. You don't have to spend this kind of money to get really good quality um, video. I was actually going to do another video on a really inexpensive setup, which would be using a $18 lapel mic uh, using the Rode mic app on an iPhone as your video recorder. And you can put that in your pocket and then uh, just using another phone as your video and then syncing them up in post. Most people have at least a cell phone. Most, most new cell phones have a decent video camera on it. Um, again, the biggest thing you want is clean audio. So um, you don't need all of this stuff. This is just for, you know, uh, wherever what I use. I'll do another separate video um, on, on tripods and lighting systems. Um, I have like soft boxes like this one over here. Sorry, my office is so messy. Um, I've got umbrella lights um, and I've got another one over here. These are cheap. You can get these on Amazon. These are the Cowboy Studio setup lights. You can get them for like 70 bucks and you get three of them. Um, there's one there and I, I'm not even using all three. This is actually a different soft box um, that I use in the office quite a bit. Um, so I'll do another video on like tripods and soft boxes and all that kind of stuff. Um, I'll do a, a separate video or multiple videos probably on the Phantom 3 Professional because that's a totally different ball game. But um, it is part of my video arsenal and uh, it's, it's really cool. Um, I'll also probably do another video on um, the Fiutech 3 axis gimbal, which I use with these guys because um, it's really, really cool. Um, but it's, you know, I don't use it on a daily basis or anything. It's more for uh, specific purposes. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to uh, send me a PM or just post a comment down below and I'll try to get to all of them as uh, best I can. Um, if you like any of this stuff, I'll have links to where they are on Amazon or eBay and the older stuff to the can or the JVC and the other video mic will be linked down below as well. So if you liked the video, I uh, appreciate a thumbs up, give a sub and uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. That's what I'm using right now. So until next time guys, uh, you know, stay frosty, sexy bitches.